This is the Oklahoma Talking Company. Welcome to Activate Your Strengths with Rhonda Boyle. StrengthsFinder 2.0 is an analytical assessment created by Gallup Corporation, and many people today are using it to change their lives, improve their relationships, and enhance their work experience. This is the podcast where we explore using your natural talents and gifts in your personal and professional development. And now, here's your host, Rhonda Boyle. Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to the Activate Your Strengths show. My name is Rhonda Boyle. I'm here with Jason Baffrey. How you doing, sir? I am doing fantastic, Rhonda. We- it's another great day in the Oklahoma Talking Company studios. It is. It is. And we are going to have a great conversation this morning with our guest. I already had a good conversation with her. <laughs> we were early. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. I come in here by the seat of my pants, don't I? Well, I am excited to introduce you to our guest today. She was born and raised in Choctaw, Oklahoma. And she has a 21-year-old son. She is an expert in proposal and and grant writing, which we're going to learn a little bit more about later. And currently, she lives in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Welcome, Nina Lay. Thank you, Rhonda. Yay, glad you are here this morning. So we always start out talking about StrengthsFinder and learning what your top five talents are. So tell us what those are. My top five are, number one, maximizer, communication, achiever, woo, and individualization. There you go. So for those of you just joining us new and don't have any idea what we're talking about, we are talking about the StrengthsFinder 2.0 assessment and how people change their lives or create magnificent lives by using this tool. And there are 34 talents and we are we all have 30 we have all 34. You Nina have all 34, I have all 34 and Jason has all 34. The question is how do they show up in dominance? And for you, it's maximizer, communication, achiever, woo and individualization. So, here's a question. Okay. How did you even hear about the test? We've been working together for 18 months. So tell right. everybody how. Right. So we met at a fundraiser um um one of my friends uh I went I went there with her right and uh I remember that coaching was on my mind that day I had actually been thinking I wanted to learn more about what is coaching in the different right. types and my friend said you need to talk to Rhonda and when you came in I said hey what do you do? What What is this about <laughs> Strengths Finder? Tell me about coaching. Yeah. And so I, I know we that. had a conversation that night over dinner, and I went home that night, got on my laptop, and took the Strengths Finder assessment. Okay, so what did you think? You know, you get back these words. Mm-hmm. What I mean, what did you think when you first took the test? Well, it was it was like wow. It's interesting that these were considered talents or strengths because to me it was it was like this. This is who I am. Wow, this is cool. You know, and right. it, it made sense. Um, it also kind of felt like a compliment. Like these are what make me special yeah. and unique. You know, when I saw those those words, it, it just it made a lot of sense, and I wanted to immediately start finding out more about them. Well, now you also told me before that you had a question about one of them. You didn't even see how it was possible. Yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, achiever. Mm-hmm. That's my number three. And so there for a minute, I did think there's there's something wrong here. That can't be true. I don't feel like an achiever at all. Like, just didn't right. relate to that as um, it didn't it didn't describe me. Right. You didn't feel that it was true. Right. So you had some questions about that, but you have found out since that it really is you. I have. Yeah, good, good. Well, we'll talk about that again in a minute. Okay. So let's move to your very first talent, which is maximizer. Mm -hmm. So people who have maximizer aim high. Perfection is our standard. And I say our because you and I share this talent, don't we? Right. So tell us um, how that shows up for you in your life. Um. Well, I, I, I do look back and see how I've always probably tried to maximize every situation I'm in without even realize I'm doing it. Right. Um, if it's not, if I don't think I can do something the best, then I tend to not want to do it at all. Exactly. I've noticed, you know, mm-hmm. because. Um, why bother? Yeah, why bother? And like you said, that word, that dirty word, mediocrity, you know, oh. 
Well, right, we uh, hate that, don't we? Yeah. So I found myself, you know, in my in my profession, I gravitated to to quality, quality control, quality assurance. Sure. And you know, never knew that I was just innately a maximizer that I can't help it. You can't. Um. So. Well, so one thing that you said uh, when we talked earlier is that you have the name where people nicknamed you Eagle Eye. Right. Um, I do in quality, you know, I could I could find the English was always my my favorite subject. Uh, and then finding errors, looking for problems and, and finding them, identifying them, but then wanting to make the process better so that there weren't errors, you know, in the work. Right. Yeah, you really found yourself always, though, maximizing processes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was real aware of that because that that showed up in my career, like I said. Sure. So um, I was I was I knew I had a strength for looking at a current process and seeing how we could make it better and wanting to make it better. I couldn't not try to make it better. Exactly. It's like that internal pressure that forces you to move forward into excellence. Right. Yeah. So that was there. And what showed up later and more recently I've become aware of is that the people side of it. So I do try to maximize people. And I never knew that. And it gets you in trouble. It gets me in a lot of trouble. Yeah. So becoming aware <laughs> of that has helped me a lot. Right. Because you can't maximize people without their permission. Right. And sometimes they really don't appreciate you showing them a more excellent idea, right? Yeah, I try to shove it down people's throats sometimes, I think. <laughs> it does. And it gets us in trouble, uh -huh. right? So, uh, yeah, I share that with you in, in you know, my maximizer sometimes struggles mm -hmm. because, you know, you just want the best for people. I do. Yeah. And I see something and I think, oh, Oh, they could do this, and then they would be so great at this. Right. And, you know, but yeah, it's their life. <laughs> it is. It is. But it's a hard one to, you know, yeah. kind of call. So I get it. So your number two talent, it, this is funny because we share like three in our top five, mm -hmm. but, but they work so differently. Your number two is communication. Right. So that means that you talk a lot. Or a little, just a little more than a lot. <laughs> uh, I've, I've been accused of talking a lot my whole life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So tell us about that. Like as a kid, did you get in trouble? All right. I I was always the one that the teacher had to make comments on the report card that Nina's great. It would just be even better if she didn't talk so much. And, I know, you know, right? So um, I've I've you know been a people person and a and a talker, and I love to communicate. Um, I like to write. Uh, yeah. That has mainly been something I've done professionally also, like um, sure. formulating emails and being persuasive in my writing. And right. then with proposals, you know, that's what I do for a profession. And uh, so that kind of comes naturally, dealing with the language and words. and, and Right. Writing. You said that uh, email that you really have progressed through your career because you've been able to to be very persuasive in mm -hmm. your email writing and that is a gift mm -hmm. of communication. Yeah, I even remember early on when I think my some of my coworkers had noticed that and they would come to me and ask me to help them write their emails to to management to supervisors sure. because they wanted to get a certain point across and so I was always and they knew you were good about that. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Now your um, your grant writing and your proposal writing, mm -hmm. so that's kind of technical. Right. I'm a writer too, but that would make me crazy. So I have learned to leverage resources and other people. Yeah. Um. So I know how to put it together and paint a picture and and kind of make the final product. Right. But I've learned that I have to have subject matter experts on the technical sure. and um, I can I can kind of interview people and get that information out of their head and then I'll put it into writing so I've learned that I don't have to know about every subject I don't have to be the expert on every right. subject I write about as long as there's an expert I can I can talk that to you can turn to mm -hmm. so the just the very <clears throat> fact that you can read a proposal like that make would make my I would probably go into a panic attack or something <laughs> you know the language around mm -hmm. it but it is a language mm -hmm. and that's something that you've been able to master because of your gift of communication right other people may not be able to do that hmm. so that's you know the communication the fact that you have that communication makes it easier for you the funnest part for me is teaching others so using my communication has helped me um 
share information and, and concepts and, and teach and train and coach. Those are things that I love. That's the part of my job. Anytime I can find a way to bring that into my job, even if it's not part of my, you know, job, Your job description, <laughs> yeah, um, then I'll, I'll work it in because I just enjoy it and, and right. kind of have a natural thing for sure. that. Yeah, and that's that's it. It's it is being able to communicate effectively ideas and concepts and things like you just said. So right, good. I love it. I know. I'm glad that you've been able to see that as a an outlet for you because the whole point of this, the whole point of understanding your talents, is to learn where you shine. Mm -hmm. You know, where is your best space? Where do you get the most joy in life? Where do you get energy? And then do more, do more of, of that. It. <laughs> That's it. Do more. That's the key. <laughs> that is the key. So let's talk about your achiever. Now, you okay. said at the beginning that when you got the test, achiever, you couldn't, you just didn't see it in your life. Right. Where was it? Oh, well, um, you know, I mean, I really kicked, kicked myself. I felt, I felt it was a negative thing that how can this be me when I don't feel I'm achieving anything at all? Mm -hmm. So I had to really think about that one. And it's probably took months. And, you know, you and I have been working together for over a year. Right. And I've I've learned some things. OK, so <laughs> what I learned about my achiever <laughs> is one, I wasn't giving myself credit for things that I I was achieving. I sure. just wasn't capturing it, documenting it, checking it off and giving myself credit for it. So um, another thing I learned is that. I felt overwhelmed, stressed, anxiety. I learned that a lot of that was because I was procrastinating. And for an achiever, procrastination is is bad. It's a bad it place is. to be. Yeah. I've is. talked to some other people, you know, in in strengths finders that have achiever and we've kind of agreed on that that that's kind of a key to unlocking how we can feel less stress, less anxiety is to actually write those things down and knock them out, cross them off. And that relieves our anxiety. So that's been freeing for me. Right. And it's, um, um, helped me kind of, I guess I need those giving myself credit for the achieving and it's not just tasks. That's another thing I learned. And my dad is the one that pointed this out to me. It was really cool. I was reading to him about, about achiever and, I told him I was struggling with that one early on, and he thought about it for a minute, and he said, you know, Nina, I think you achieve with people, not necessarily things or mm -hmm. tasks, too. He said, because you're relational, and you want to help people or make someone happy or right. include them or uh, making someone comfortable, helping them through something. Those are achievements for me as well so sure that was kind of interesting well those of us who are low in achiever and so I'm going to confess it's like my number 27 <laughs> I don't know how I get things done but I do but you guys love to keep your checklists mm -hmm. a little list that when you check things off you get great satisfaction so when I start working with people with achiever oftentimes I find that they don't have a list right they get things done and they say oh I have a list in my head it doesn't work. It doesn't work. No. And it causes you to miss things that then you beat yourself up for later. I absolutely was doing that. And I, I thought, that's silly. I'm not a checklist person, you know. Um, I, I think of that as somebody who's uh, a lot more together and uh, <laughs> <laughs> responsible than I am. You know, that's, that's what I thought. So what I've, I've adapted is um, a calendar, a, my planner becomes my checklist. It does. So as I plan things or agree to meet with people or, and make those plans, I actually check those things off. You know, I went here, I did this, I met mm. with this person, we talked about this. Um, I, I, I took time to meet with this friend, you know, that I haven't seen in a long time. And those become my checklist. Too. Sure. So they get added. Mm -hmm. Was that a um, a process that you had already been doing? I mean, obviously not making the list, but I mean, did you use a planner on a regular basis, or, or was it something you really had to learn and teach yourself and try to do? Because if I don't know where achiever is on on me, because I haven't unlocked my thirty four yet. But when you start talking about procrastination, I, I might have a little bit of that. <laughs> I, I don't you know. Have a little bit, Jason. <laughs> um, but. You know, to I've tried making lists from time to time, and it's hard to develop 
the habit mm-hmm. uh, for me. So how did you go go through that process to, to really make that a habit and start utilizing it in a way that it really helped you? That's a great question because I consistency is one of my lowest, you know, on the list. So doing anything consistently is is usually just doesn't happen with right. me. But I think, um, no, I had not been doing that. I had not been using a planner. I had not been using checklists. I had not been setting goals and, and checking them off. So, um, but I remembered a time in my life where I had, and I had, I had to. I had, um, when I was a supervisor, had a lot of responsibility, was wearing multiple hats. There, I, I could not keep track you know, of everything I had to do in my job without a list. And as I read about Achiever and started to discover this, I remembered back to that time and I thought, that really worked for me. I remember how well that worked and how, you know, I could move things forward if I didn't accomplish them, bring them forward to the next, you know, the next day or the next week. And uh, I actually just saw someone at one of Rhonda's uh, workshops that had this particular planner that I ended up buying. I saw it and I thought it was, I just, I just liked how it had um, a place for your goals, personal, professional. So I think it's adapting a method that yeah. works for you. So, mm-hmm. I mean, for the, obviously those people that aren't watching live on Periscope right now uh, and are listening to the podcast, you have a like a, a, a binder or not a binder, but a, a spiral bound mm-hmm. planner. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not using a digital method. Now, is there a reason or you, do you just like the, the writing? Is there something about the writing that's part of the process for you? Or do you have a digital list also? No, not digital. I do it here. And I think you I think you're on to something. I like the action act of writing it down and mm-hmm. I like to see my own handwriting I think and I like to scribble through things and make little notes and I have notes all over the place sure so well and millennials tend to be more technical mm-hmm. you know these True. days and so they yeah. don't ha- they don't like paper planners mm-hmm. and that's fine as long as you get the tasks out of your head and somewhere where you can check them off. Yeah, there's a couple of, I mean, really good apps. I mean, obviously Evernote, you can do things like that. Mm -hmm. Wonderlist is another one that just make lists for you. There's all kinds of list making apps uh, out there, I guess, if you didn't want to write. But I mean, I can see a benefit and and I'm still, I kind of fluctuate between the the two worlds because I have some, uh, you know, I use a lot of apps and I try to be technologically, not necessarily advanced, but at least somewhat up to date. But there is something about, you know, if I go to a meeting, I take a pen and paper usually, um, you know, and I like writing stuff down, although I am much messier than what you seem to be here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I have lots of scribbles, I promise. Um, well, I think achievers don't recognize how critical that list is. Mm. It is it is the thing that actually drives you forward. Dr- you are driven to check that mm-hmm. box. So yeah. the more you can organize your life in some type of way, in a planner, in an app, as long as you get the opportunity to check it off, and as you said earlier, add things to your list – because when we see you as achievers, we're, we're looking at you thinking, wow, she can get a lot of stuff done. I don't Maybe feel that way. Maybe she'll do this, too. Mm-hmm. I still don't feel that way. But but we add things to your I list. I think that's part of it. Yeah, I just constantly, there's more, there's more. Yeah, mm-hmm. and being able to document that is really critical for you. So you told me a, a story about the dry cleaner and how you really <laughs> kind of got back into your list making. That Tell was us the that. day that it unlocked I unlocked the, what I was what I was talking about with anxiety. Um, I had been having a, a somewhat of a problem, a challenge with anxiety, and this one little thing. I had wanted to take this bedding to the dry cleaners for months. I had gotten to a point where I just shoved it in a closet to get it out of my face. You know, I knew I needed to do it. It was in the back of my head, and uh, so I finally. After, you know, some some working with Rhonda, actually, I thought I might need to make a list. And I <laughs> Maybe made I'll a, try her theory. Yeah, it was a post-it note list <laughs> and there was only five things on it. And I thought this Saturday I'm doing this. And uh, I went to the dry cleaners and I, I got that done and I went back home and I went back to my little post-it note and I did a big check mark and I put a big happy face by it. Yeah. And it seems silly. 
But I, you would, would not understand the relief and the hap- joy I felt from accomplishing that. And then I stuck the little post-it note on my refrigerator and left it there for a good week to remind myself how good that felt. Exactly. And then I could take it and expand on that in, sure. into the rest of my life, you know, and bigger things. Well, now, let me ask you this, because Maximizer wants to maximize things and get the most out of something. And Achiever just wants to get something done. <gasps> so is that a battle that you've got going on Let inside? me tell you. I have I found that I think that's one of my biggest struggles Mm -hmm. with, you know, with the combined strengths is that um, and I found this at work and I've had people point it out to me, actually, that um, they will say, why are you building this up to be such a big deal? They see it maybe simple, you know, just get it done. Right. I'm like, because I want to plan out the best way, you know, yes, and I tend to make it more complicated than maybe it needs to be. Maybe. But I want to at least consider sure. how, how great I can make it versus a deadline versus just needing to get it done and move on to the next thing on my list. Right. So I'm constantly having to kind of rate it on how important is it to be per- perfect or high quality versus Good enough. And oh, I hate that word, good enough. Oh my gosh. It <laughs> That's just hard smells for me. like mediocrity mm-hmm. to me, too. <laughs> I get it. So I tend to work longer hours sometimes by my own choice mm-hmm. because I'll, I'll do it at night so that I can put as much effort into it as you I just want have without to anyone, maximize it mm-hmm, sometimes. Without anyone breathing down my neck. Sure. Over. Yeah. Well, and but the good news is that you're aware of it. Mm-hmm. So instead of maximizing everything, you now make a choice of what you're going to maximize and what you I have are to. not. Mm-hmm. And that's great. And then you don't feel guilt about it. You just know it's something that you had you did. That's and, a big key there, right? With mm-hmm. guilt, you know, is that can cause anxiety too. Right. So sure. being able to just be aware and make choices and not feel guilty about that's them. it. Give yourself permission. There you go. All right. So how about the woo girl? You got woo. I do have woo. Can you stand it, Jason? I mean, we've got woo in the room. No, it's it's good. I mean, I, I needed a little woo today, and, and Nina's not. Uh, I mean, it's down a little bit on her top five, so she doesn't uh, blow the doors off the place when she comes in necessarily. Like somebody else, you know. <laughs> I, I call right. it. I call it a toned down woo. Sometimes, toned down right, woo. Right? Yeah, and I haven't always. Um, been able to tone it down. (laughs) Sure. But, you know, you find yourself uh, really Mm. reaching out to people, total strangers. You love talking to them in the grocery store or whatever. I I get a kick out of it. Um, I can't stop myself. And some people, it, it embarrasses some people, you know, that I will just talk to strangers and make friends with uh, the drive through uh, person, you know, helping me or whoever it is. But yeah, I talk, I talk to everybody. I like to just give out random compliments, be silly, um, leave, leave someone um, laughing or shaking their head, or even if right. it's at my expense, I just feel like that makes life more interesting. Well, and it's, you're <laughs> living in the moment with people when you can compliment people and say, oh my gosh, I love that necklace. It would look great on me. You know, <laughs> I, I say things like that to people and it is, it's an in the moment type of thing. Mm, it's very really living in the moment is mm-hmm. what you're doing. So I know that your sister once, and I know Aaron, yeah. right? Hello, Aaron. Shout out to Aaron. <laughs> so, um, she said one time when you had made some friends, you had gone somewhere and she's like, oh my gosh, you were only outside for two minutes. Yeah, literally. How did that happen? Right. I went out to the, I went out to my car in the, in, in the parking lot, met somebody and I've actually like become friends with them, you know, sure. just from talking to them in the parking lot. <laughs> That's funny. Yes. We do talk to just about anybody, <laughs> but we're not always networking because you don't do a lot of networking. No, I mean, I've started to in the last year or so as I've thought about, um, you know, having my own business, mm-hmm. freelancing some mm-hmm. work. I've started networking. And it's fun. It, you know, woos. We love that. But um, uh, it was never really a part of my life. So I think what I found is that whether it's at work or, or outside of work, I have to be around people. Yeah. I love to be around people. I and um, and new people. Yeah, that's the important thing. Is it's new people. Mm-hmm. It's not just this. If you're stuck in an office, which you do work in an office, mm-hmm. you still have to find an outlet. So this is why you talk to strangers all the time because there <laughs> there's not an influx there's of not new enough, people right into your office, and so you don't have new people to talk to. I'll go find them. So you will go find mm-hmm. them. Like 
10 a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least 10 a day. I would say that's a good number Yeah, um, that I ha that I need to be around, I need to interact with. And yeah, I'll, I'll go take a walk sometimes during the day at the office and just find someone new that I haven't sure. chatted with. And, and so what happens if you're not around new people? Mm, I would say that I can get depressed. Yeah, it's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is really, I remember a time in my life where I had little people and we were living in South Dakota and it was cold and snowy and I was not around new people. Not a good place for a woo to be. No, right. and there is a sense of depression that can come you know, to a woo if they don't have, I mean, this is, you know, I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on TV, but this has just been my personal experience. Me too. And the experience I've had uh, talking with other woos mm -hmm. is that we must have people. And I think this is something that other people, people who are other gifted, don't really get about us. Mm -hmm. It is a way that we get energy. Yeah. And then we have we to go give that energy feed off away. that energy and then share it. Yeah, because mm -hmm. whether we are, people want it or not, we're going to share that energy. <laughs> that's exactly right. We're going to give you some energy. <laughs> so let's talk about your individualization. Now, this is a talent that is intuitive and that is um, you can't even really explain how you know that you know about people and how they're going to excel and shine. I, I would say that almost this is probably my favorite of my talent. Yeah. Um, because it allows me to see each person as an individual and unique. Um, it helps me professionally also, mm -hmm. um, because I can, I can kind of see when someone's being maybe left out or excluded, um, or not, not being part of the team, um, uh, what's, what they need, yes. their needs. Um, I recognize differences in people and kind of know, figure out where that's coming from mm -hmm. and I can connect with them. So someone, um, several people recently have told me that they think that I have a talent for making people feel comfortable. And well, I think do. that's it. I think it's the individualization. Because you sense something about that person mm -hmm. that you're able to point out or something and you're using it in combination with your woo and your communication right so um just a little point is that we break these talents apart to understand them but you're always combining talents mm -hmm. you never just use one right it's always two or three you know kind of co combined but that uh individualization for you you mentioned that it helps you build teams at work especially right um i think it helps me uh, encourage teamwork and people to get along. Sure. Uh, so if I, I often find myself in the role of mediator, and that's when two people you can't communicate or sure. get along. Right. Uh, I tend to get. I tend to be the one they come to, and I, I'll point out things to people like, you know, you're seeing this person as difficult. I see them as they have these needs and they're not being met or this is why they're like that. And that person mm -hmm. may not have told me that's, you know, why they're, they're acting that way or feeling that way. I just pick up on it. Well, it's an intuitive way of reading people mm -hmm. and it's a gift. You can't, nobody knows why you have it and you can't even explain how it works really, except that it does work. And that's how it is. It's intuitive. And you hate stereotypes. I do hate stereotypes. Mm -hmm. Hate is a strong word, first of all. But <laughs> but you hate stereotypes. But I would say that I, it can make me very angry. And I don't get angry very often. I, I think that's probably the thing I'm most sensitive to. Sure. Is people being uh, stereotyped, um, judged without knowing that person, you know. Yeah, exactly. And thrown into a, a group of uh, and just categorized. So I'm all for stats. You know, there's a um, av the average employee or the, uh, you know, 50 percent of people in this group are like this. OK, I get it. But I still see everyone as an individual. You everyone do. is unique. So it's really hard for me. Well, that's a great gift. And it's a good one for coaching. So that's why you're attracted to coaching. I am. I know. So let me ask you this. We have one last question. What would you tell somebody who was brand new, who just took the test, which, by the way, can be found at www.gallopstrengthscenter.com? What would you tell them after they take the test what to do? 
Oh, what to do? Mm-hmm. Well, um, you, you, you can't just read the description and and figure out how it's going to unlock things in your mm-hmm. life. So it's interesting. It's fun, you know, to read about. But um, it, this has been a journey for me. So everything I'm able to talk about right now and the awareness of my strengths and the needs I, I have because of those strengths um, is because of the journey that I've been on with l- digging deeper and yes. learning more about it. Um, but if you're, you know, if you're stuck with something or you're, you feel like you just need to, you know, you need a change, but you don't know how and you're just in a rut. It's learning about these strengths and then being able to recognize those strengths in others yes. that will allow you to make changes in your life. And um, for me personally, it's just strengthened my relationships with people. I mean, it's just happened. I didn't I don't feel like right. I had to do much. It just happened because I've become so much more aware. It is. Yeah, it is that awareness. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Tell us how we can reach you. Anybody in the audience who wants to reach out? How can they? Oh, find you? well, I don't know if you said my full name. It's Nina, Nina Lay. Lay. You saw me tagged on Facebook. Yes. So of course, you know, I'm a I'm a Facebook person. My woo is all over Facebook. <laughs> and uh, also it's a uh, I mean, my email's too long, so I would just say Facebook. Okay, Nina Lay. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we are the Activate Your Strength Show. And you can find me, Rhonda Boyle, at Rhonda at yellowsubgroup.com. And we have workshops here in Oklahoma City. We would love to have you join us. And we thank you for joining us today. Bye, Periscopers. And go and live in your strengths. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Activate Your Strengths with Rhonda Boyle is a presentation of Oklahoma Talking Company. Learn more and listen to other great programs at oklahomatalking.co. This has been a production of Destiny Creative.